Hare Krishna, my name is Gordon Ryan. Uh, for those who don't really know me, uh, I had the extreme good fortune to be living in Mayapur for 10 years. Uh, I'm from Hungary and uh, it is incredibly saddening and it's absolutely heartbreaking to 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 get the news that Sri Bhad Bhakti Chiru Swami has left our world and has gone back to Krishna. And uh, uh, I saw many devotees uh, sharing memories with Maharaj, which was very heart uh, warming and very touching. Uh, extremely wonderful Sri P's videos, it's like amazing. And I thought I will also share a few things with you because uh, we know a lot of things of Maharaj, so I figured I should share some incredibly sweet memories that not many people know because it, it, it happened in a way that not many people can remember it. Uh, Maharaj is an extremely well-known preacher. He's such an amazing character, such an amazing person. He has literally affected the entire world with his programs, uh, with his movie series on, on Srila Prabhupada and, and also uh, I mean, the Ujjain temple is just so incredible and everything. But uh, unbeknown to most, Maharaj has also accepted an invitation, two invitations, in fact, by my wonderful uncle, Lavanga Prabhu, in Hungary. He came in, in into our lives here in Hungary in 1985. So that's like 35 years ago. So it's like a long, long, long time ago. And I don't know to this day how it happens, you know, even in these days, that how we get to invite such stalwart devotees like Bhakti Chiru Swami. I don't know how it's done. But nonetheless, my uncle uh, got in touch with Bhakti Chiru Maharaj and he accepted our invitation. Now you'll have to know the background story is that in 1985 we were still uh, a communist bloc country in Hungary, east of Europe. Uh, it wasn't really happening, any preaching here. We had a tiny community here in Hungary starting from the 70s but uh, due to some unfortunate events and some miscommunication those devotees sort of like left the fold of ISKCON and has started up their own thing for some time and yes the ISKCON GBC was trying to uh, uh, fix the situation and, and devotees were sent uh, uh, time and time again into Hungary to, to reconcile things with the devotees here wasn't really happening. Then my uncle, he, he moved back to Hungary in 1984 uh, to start a little bit of preaching here. And uh, we had Prabhu Vishnu Maharaj come, Sutra Maharaj come. Uh, but the first trip that Prabhu Vishnu Maharaj took here, we didn't even know of that. Uh, the Gaudiama devotees were informed down in the south of, of Hungary, but they never gave us any news of that. So we basically just missed that opportunity. Maharaj came, he was here for couple of days in, in Budapest waiting for somebody to get in contact with him in a hotel but nothing ever happened so basically these things are very uh, mis misunderstood misfortunate happenings but then all of a sudden my uncle got the opportunity to invite Bhakti Chirumaj and, and then everything changed uh, until now we are trying our best to do a bit of preaching uh, you must understand as a communist uh, country uh, Anything to do with meditation, with yoga, with spirituality, with India was uh, not really uh, accepted by the government. So basically our preaching efforts was like tiny. Uh, we were doing fun things like, you know, sitting out in the streets and and uh, sort of like uh, singing the Maha Mantra and acting like street musicians. People even threw coins at us. So it's like, it was an amazing thing like that. Or sometimes just going to big shopping malls, you know and just tell the lady at the counter that we have lost our nephew or niece or any anything and and his or her name is Gopal, so could you please call, announce that we are waiting for Gopal at the, at the entrance, at the main entrance, so then we are figuring out, ah, this is wonderful preaching, thousands of people heard the holy name, Gopal! <laughs> so you're doing things like this, you know, like very small <laughs> things. And basically the preaching method was very easy in Hungary, I'm not very easy, very, very simple. There's this beautiful picture of Lord Krishna sitting uh, on the floor of a, of a palace and there is a huge pot of butter tipped over and he's sticking a couple of his fingers into his mouth. You know, he's got a 
uh, bun on, on uh, tied up on his knot like like a man bun, and he's very cute and very sweet. We had that picture in a pretty large printout, and then my mom's a hairdresser; she's not a devotee. And we actually put that picture up onto her mirror. So when ladies are sitting around getting their hair done, they would naturally ask, what's this whole thing about? What is this picture and everything? And if my mother deemed that person uh, good enough to be informed about our preaching efforts, <laughs> she or he was told where the programs were going to happen. <laughs> and, and this way we, we, we came into contact with new people, you know. If my mother figured that person to be too strange or might be part of the secret service, then then, then of course that person was not told anything. <laughs> he was just given a story or she was just given a story. Oh, this is a wonderful picture from India. My my, my, my cousin brought it from India and this, that, blah. So basically this is how simple the preaching was at back then in 1985. Uh, my mom was like, you know, getting <laughs> interested people into her programs. So Bhatti Chiramaj, I don't know how, but he accepted our, our invitation. He came. He came in a wig. <laughs> he came in, 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 in karmic clothes, in civilian clothes. It was amazing. We picked him up from the airport. You must understand, this is like an East Bloc country in the mid-80s. So it's like you didn't see many foreigners here, not at all. Especially not people with the tone of skin that Maharaj had, that wonderful golden hue. So anywhere we, we went, people were asking questions like, you know, who is this, who is that? So he said, yeah, yeah, I'm a relative from India. Instead. But nonetheless, it was pretty, you know, difficult to, to get by. So initially, Maharaj would stay in a different place every two days. So we ended up moving him around quite a bit so he doesn't get too crazy. Uh, this way, uh, we ended up having him in my, in my house <laughs> for two days. I slept in my bed. I shared a bed. Uh, I shared a room at that time with my, with my older brother. Uh, of course, I had a picture of Panchatat above my uh, bed and everything. But Panchatat was nicely uh, set uh, amongst soccer players, sports people, uh, rock musicians, and all sorts of actors. So it's really crazy. I mean, I mean, I was I was eight years old at that time, so it was like you know, completely insane. Of course, I had a huge poster. Hanumanji, as of course, as well. So just before Maharaj started bunking at our place, I, I, I got my brother to take off the the pictures of Madonna and, and other singers, lady singers, who didn't have much clothes on at that time. So basically, he basically just pulled a few pictures of which were like too indecent. <laughs> so Maharaj stayed with us for two days, and, and it was amazing. I mean, Maharaj's mood and Maharaj's sweetness and everything was just so amazing. So... Uh, the preaching went like wow <laughs> from that time onwards so the next time Bhakti Shri Maharaj came uh, we actually started having a program at my mom's place where he stayed with us before uh, which is a pretty big place it was 125 square, square meters for those of you who are Americans or who don't really know the metric system this is well over a thousand square feet so it's like a big place and by that time, Marge didn't stay with us because we actually managed to rent a little place. After Marge came, it was just like preaching started picking up. So we rented a little place. It was like a, it wasn't a temple, but it was basically a place for us to get together and have programs regularly. I think at that time was the first time when we started having regular Sunday programs. But like, you know, it, mostly devotees and just a couple of newcomers every single weekend. So, but Marge was coming again, and it, it was just went bang, the preaching, like completely, <laughs> completely crazy. So my uncle was in, 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 in Australia for many years, and, and, and there was other Hungarian devotees who were uh, living in Australia, uh, part of the ISKCON community as, as immigrants. So a couple of them wanted to come back to Hungary anyway to, to see family and friends. So they said, oh, wow, Marge is coming. We will, you know, time our visit to 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 also have Darshan of Maharaj and we'll take care of the cooking, don't worry. Uh, this was Saradarshi and, uh, and Tatpurush, you know, two wonderful devotees. So basically what happened, by the time Maharaj was, you know, coming and the verse was getting around, oh, Swamiji is coming again, it's going to be a big lecture and everything. We had 150 people <laughs> sign up for the class that Maharaj was going to give. Which is incredible. I mean, the temple place was nowhere near able fitting that sort of, you know, capacity. 
So we lived in a street, doesn't matter, it was Buddha Foki Street, doesn't really matter the name. But basically, you could come up to our place, you're living in, in, in house number three. You could climb three stairs, we didn't have a, a, an elevator in the building, and, and come into our place. But actually, you could also come into our place by coming in next door. This was, you know, the street, the, the house number five seven. Uh, go up the stair, uh, go up by by elevator on to the fifth floor, walk across, you know, to our building, come down a flight of stairs, and then and 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 and, and, and enter into our flat. So, in the communist time, there's no no way you could actually meet even 10, 15 people without not being noticed and without not being, you know, sort of like ask, ask questions about it. Uh, the Secret Service was crazy, but basically uh, now, according to the modern, you know, researches and everything, uh, at least 25, uh, some people say up to 30% of the population was in connection with the Secret Service who would tell on others uh, because the government has forced them or asked them to do so. So basically, it was to, to pull this off, it was impossible. So basically, what we did, we started having people arrive two hours before Marge's lecture. On the hour, we had five people come upstairs through Buddha Foki Tree, through our house. On the five, the zero five minutes, we had five people come up on the elevator, cross the roof, come into our place. Then again, 10 past, we had five people come upstairs, from our area. Then, 15 past the hour, we had five more people come upstairs. <laughs> so basically, we could get 10 people in uh, every 10 minutes. <laughs> but it was insane. The day before, we went out shopping with my uncle. Uh, to just give you a small anecdote, uh, the first Hungarian Bhagavad Gita that was printed Actually, it was paid for by my family, my, my wonderful family. Actually, it was smuggled into the country through a uh, 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 drug smuggler. We couldn't get Hungarian Bhagavad Gita into the country. And we didn't know how to smuggle. So my, my, my uh, uncle's brother had a friend who was <laughs> into you know, trafficking stuff. <laughs> and he actually managed to smuggle the Bhagavad Gita into the country. <laughs> And like in the movies, in the middle of the night, we went to a park and we unloaded his car and loaded everything into our car. Every time we had these crazy things like, you know, night shifts and stuff like that, they always take me along because I was always the cause of why we are around in the middle of the night in a car. Because at night, there was no traffic in Hungary back in the 80s. It was like nothing. So it was very likely to be stopped by the police and, you know, be interrog interrogated, you know, ask for papers and everything. So always say, you know, well, you know, Adam is not feeling too well. We are going to the hospital. <laughs> this is the story all the time. So every time we had to do something funny, you know, at night, I was always taken along. You know, I was like, I was the fall guy, you know, so it was just crazy. So this is how crazy it was Hungary, 85. So we went shopping and, and we figured out an amazing feast, right? Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how many of you devotees are around from the 80s or the 70s or the 90s. Uh, uh, it's 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 not that it's not like that anymore. You know, anywhere you go, it's 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 like the the, the feasts in the eighties and nineties was completely crazy. It was just like it was just like nectar dripping off the spoon and everything. So basically, uh, we ended up you know writing everything up what we need for everything. You know, paneer sabji, you know, pancakes and all. So it was like a mixture of Hungarian de delicacies and, and Vedic delicacies. So we ended up buying six hundred liters of milk for one hundred and fifty people. We ended up buying like 50 kgs of, of sugar. And back then in Hungary, you know, we didn't have it as rough communism as, 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 as some of other Eastern European nations, like, like the Czechs or the, the Polish people or, or like the Yugoslavians and everything. So we always had tons of stuff in our, in, in our, in our stores. I mean, we had bananas and everything. We had Hollywood movies in, 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 the, in the theater. We didn't have it as rough. So nobody was actually putting up like a huge amount of food ever, you know, to start like stashing and everything. We never had that in Hungary. It was, it was just unheard of. So we did our shopping. Of course, we had to go to a big store, you know, to do the shopping like this. You couldn't, you know, shop 600 liters of milk, you know, buy 600 liters of milk in a small store. 
So actually, the next day we got into the newspapers by that. You know, it was just an article. You know, do, do you guys did you hear anything? You know, is there houses again being hiked? You know, we saw people. You know, yesterday in the evening they're buying six hundred liters of milk. You know, they're buying a huge amount of sugar. So it was like it was communist. It was, it was like a village thing. You know, here in Hungary, everybody knew of everything. So Saradarshi, that Purush. My uncle, Labanga, and, and a good few of my family members, we were preparing, you know, Prashad for like two days non-stop, you know. <laughs> it was just so amazing. My other brother, he's a pretty tough guy, he was there, you know, sitting on the floor of the kitchen, peeling potatoes for the program, you know. <laughs> That's the only devotional thing he did ever in his life, but, you know, God bless him. So basically, we, I mean, we, cook, we cooked up this amazing feast. Marge arrived, she brought Marge into the flat by, uh, by uh, of course, in, in, in a civilian dress. Marge, you know, took his wig off, took his civilian clothes off, dressed up in his Vaishnava Sanyasi uh, garb, looking shining, put his tilak on and everything. And he sang this super wonderful bhajan. I mean, it's like it's completely, it's just un, un, unbelievable. Uh, Raghunath, you know, some guru police know him my little nephew, uh, Raghunath and myself, we played the drums, Bhakti Chumaraj played the harmonium, Labanga played the kartals, and it was just amazing. And five minutes into the bhajan, somebody's knocking on the door, you know, but like in an angry manner, like, bah, 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 bah. So my uncle opens the door, you know, like <laughs> this wide, sticks an eye out, <laughs> what's, what's happening? This music is too loud, I can't sleep, this, that, blah, 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 blah. My uncle says, I'm very sorry, I'm a big fan of Indian music, but we'll lower the volume down, you know, because the guy thought we were just actually playing a record or something, so he came into the room, told my Marge, I'm very sorry, but could you just play the harmonia a little softer? And he told us, okay, kids, you know, one of you have to put the drums down, no tumridangas. <laughs> and, and he grabbed hold, Full, full fists onto the car, also just was like clanking it around. So it was just it was like this, and then and Maharaj gave this wonderful lecture, of course. And I mean, we had like a thousand square feet, a one hundred twenty-five square meter pad, but I mean, we didn't have big spaces in there. I mean, I mean the largest door, room was my mom's room, it was like you know five meters before it was like twenty square meters. You know, that's like you know hundred eighty square feet, and it's like not big. So much sat in the corner in that flat, in that room. But we had three doors into that room. One door was going to my sister's room, another door was going to my brother's and mine room, and the third door was actually going into the corridor because we had this seven and a half meter long corridor that connected the living space up with, 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 the, with the living room and the kitchen and the storage room and everything. So we had that room where Marge was sitting was jammed with people. Uh, my sister's room was jammed with people. My brother's and mine room jammed with people. Seven and a half meters of the corridor. Seven and a half meters is like, it's almost 25 foot, 20, 25 feet. <coughs> jammed with people. Our living room jammed with people. And some people were sitting in the kitchen. So basically how the thing went, Marge said a few sentences in English. My uncle was translating it into Hungarian. And while Marge spoke again, there was three people standing in the doorway uh, leading towards my room, sister's room, and the corridor. And when Marge spoke again, those three people, they whispered whatever the translation was of Marge's previous words to the people sitting in spaces where they couldn't even see Maharaj, they could only hear his teachings, you know. <laughs> That's so amazing, you know, Vani and Vapu, <laughs> in, in practice. But, I mean, the, the corridor was super long, like 20 feet, 5 long, you know, and, and 25 feet, yeah. So you have to bear with my English. Uh, unfortunately, I, I left the Gurukul 19 years ago, almost 20 years ago. It's incredible. Not many people speak uh, English in Hungary, so the last 20 years I haven't been speaking English at all, so you have to bear with me on this one. So basically, it was a super long corridor, so actually the person who was whispering from the doorstep of the room where Marge was sitting towards the corridor was only heard up to the end of the corridor, but the people are living in the living room they couldn't hear a word. 
So one blog would always repeat everything to them <laughs> that was said by the person who was standing actually in the doorway who could actually see Maharaj. So basically it wasn't just like a one move over, you know, whispering of what Maharaj was saying to everybody else. But like at one point we had two guys passing the information on. So it's just amazing. It was just such an amazing program we had. I would say ISKCON Hungary started then. Because in the 70s we had ISKCON Hungary and my uncle was the only guy, you know, out of all those hippies who <laughs> had a flat. So so when I was very young, when I was like, you know, two, three, four, five years old, we always had amazing devotees coming to uh, our place to stay with us. But we was always like these makeshift places, rents, you know. Actually it happened in our house when Hari Kishman had to jump out of the window from the first floor. Uh, because the secret police, you know, did a, <laughs> uh, um, a quick search on us in the house, and Marge actually jumped out of the window in dhoti and 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 kurta, barefoot, no socks, out into the snow, and he was hiding, you know, in the bushes for half an hour before they, those people left. So we had these wonderful devotees staying with us. We had uh, Sachinanda Maharaj, that time Sachinanda Prabhu, come to our place. We had Avinas Chandra and Suchandra, two more uh, German brahmacharis. Later on, they were uh, Sanyash initiated by the names of Bhakti Bhav Maharaj and Bhakti Bhushan Maharaj. And we had Ganesh Yam Prabhu stay with us a couple of times, Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj, we had Devamrita Maharaj stay with us, Devamrita Prabhu. So we had, we had, of course, Kundali Prabhu and, of course, uh, some other stalwarts devotees like that. So we had amazing devotees, but there was not, not no such thing as a temple scene, no such thing as a regular program. It was just basically, you know, like, as it happened, you know, sort of thing, you know. Uh, and yes, of course, we had Swatra Maharaj, we had Prabhupada Maharaj come a couple of times. But basically, after the first visit of, of, of Maharaj, we had basically Iskon Hungary start. That was when we were able to get a thing together, a little place to rent and, and to, to be able to pay the rent, you know, and to have a little tiny space where we could actually uh, have people meet regularly where you had like the devotees live there and then they, they, they could basically be on duty anytime. I mean, we had, in Hungary, back in the 80s and 90s, after Sunday, feast programs, it was like crazy. Uh, the program would go on until 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. It was just completely insane. But all started by Bhakti Chiru Maharaj. So after his first trip to Hungary, we had uh, actually the the empowerment and, and, and the interest of people to start our own place. And, and his second trip to Hungary was basically, that was just, just, just pushed everything over the brim, you know, it's like, bang, you know, everything is starting off completely just like, 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 crazed and, 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 and bhakti infused, and it was just super, super enthusiasm he imbibed into everybody. It was, it, it's just, just so amazing. And that's all due to Mahatma Maharaj's, Maharaj's mercy, Bhakti Maharaj. And mind you, this was in 85, so we ended up writing a letter uh, the Gurukul in end of 91. Uh, beginning of 92, Marge was made in charge of the Gurukul. He actually, uh, he accepted us into the Gurukul, Raghunath and myself. And we met Bhakti Chiru Maharaj then in the Gurukul. And actually, he remembered who we were, even though we haven't met for seven years. <laughs> I'm asking if you change a lot, you know. <laughs> So it's just so amazing, and any time Maharaj met me in the in the Gurukul in Mayapur, he always remember. Of, co of course, he 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 didn't know I, I was initiated. I was called Gordon Ryan, so he was just called me by my his pre-initiation name, which was Prolad. So he always called me Prolad, which was like a wonderful thing between the two of us. And never bothered telling him Maharaj, you know, I was initiated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I didn't want to brag or anything like that. So he kept calling me Prolad. And, and and he was always so kind and so nice and just so caring. And I remember uh, attending his Madhurya Kadambini lectures in Mayapur, up in his room, uh, in the conch building, up on the conch building roof. And he would know who I am. And it was just so amazing because, you know, Maharaj, he was surrounded by tens of thousands of people, not thousands, tens of thousands. But he was such a caring uh, amazing focus and amazing <laughs> uh, uh, qualities like that. And then, then in, 90, in 2004, Shri Prabhu's kindness was to invite us Gurukul students to help with the installations in, in, in the Fiji Islands. 
uh, that was the big temple installation. They had, of course, the long time temple standing there in Otaka. You know, they have these wonderful murtis of Lord Krishna dancing on the Kaliya snake. And now they had this, this amazing temple built in Suva. The three altars, you know, amazing murtis and then just amazing community, just super wonderful community. And of course, Maharaj was invited as one of the main guests to this event and it was just amazing and, and, and we were invited you know to, to do the installation the, the yagyas and everything uh, of course uh, Nadirta Prabhu was there uh, the amazing wonderful devotee uh, that he is and he's still in Mayapur you probably know him he works a lot for the GVC Rupa Raghunath Prabhu was there from, from Holland he's an amazing amazing devotee and he's actually a disciple of Bhakti Maharaj and of course, Krishna was there from New Zealand. He's also disciple of Akhtar Marjan. So there's a good few of us Gurukul, you know, connected people there. And and that the installation was just amazing. We had the Vyaspriya Maharaj also there. We had, uh, of course, Bir Krishna Maharaj, you know, there. He's 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 the person who's giving the inspiration to that community and everything. So so we had this wonderful wonderful installation. It was just amazing. And after the installations, then the Swamiji's were doing uh, initiations. So temple authorities, they asked us, could you please also do the Yagya for the temple, uh, for the initiates, because it's just so nice to have it done in a very proper way. And we did the whole thing, it was very amazing. And to my utmost surprise, you know, Maharaj asked me, so he said, uh, Prahlad, <laughs> I think in Fiji he figured I was initiated because everybody used to call me Gordon Ryan, but he was still calling me Prahlad. So Prahlad, could you pass me the microphone? And I was like, yes, Maharaj. And he said, I know this boy for the last 30 years. <laughs> I almost, you know, fainted. I was so ashamed of myself, you know. Uh, you, you must understand, probably some of you know me, you must understand that sometimes I'm really sorry that uh, that uh, people and devotees come into contact with my Apur Gurukul through me because actually I was the, the most useless person there. <laughs> I was actually attending the school there filled with wonderful devotees, filled with amazing devotees. As I just said, Anathirza Prabhu, Rupa Raghunath Prabhu, now yeah, now um, Priti Vardhana Prabhu has been initiated into the Sanyas order, his name is Bhakti Arjava Priti Vardhan Swami <laughs> and Subhakshana Prabhu and Malav Goranga Prabhu and Narugopal Prabhu. I mean, we have such stalwart devotees, uh, Sri Prahlad just mentioned in the beginning of this video. So we had these amazing, you know, amazing, amazing, amount of wonderful devotees and, and that's me. <laughs> Which is like totally useless, you know. So sometimes I feel sorry, but yeah, well, whatever. So Maharaj said, I know, I know Gordon Ryan, I know for 30 years, and it's so amazing, you know. He was a little kid, I was teaching him in Hungary how to cook, <laughs> how to sing Bengali bhajans, how to cook dice prasada, but now all of a sudden, after 30 years, he's able to do this whole installation for you all and he does all the yagyas and the pujas and the mantras and how wonderful that is of course as i said i almost fainted i felt so ashamed of myself i wanted to sink into the ground you know please mother earth take me and it was like you know but mine was like that he was just so kind and and so sweet and was always able to to actually uh put the focus on to others and, and, and stay in the back and, and be really withdrawn and really humble and really sweet. So it's like, like in Hungary we have an expression which is a lot sweeter than in English. In English we have this expression common wealth and we also have this like public wealth or, or you know things like that, you know that something that we can use you know everybody has an it's not like use everybody has like 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 a ability to, to, to gain out of it you know. But in Hungary, we have an expression for this as uh, common treasure or public treasure. Is the, the expression is Kuskinch in Hungarian. And actually, Bhakti Churu Swami was a public treasure. He was a treasure for all of us. He was just such an amazing, kind-hearted, gentlemanly, sweet, wonderful, just such an amazing person. So it is, yes, it is very heartbreaking uh, to have him leave. But, you know, sometimes, you know, some Acharyas say that it's, it's, it's separation is not only felt by, by, by the devotees of the Lord, it's also felt by the Lord. 
So sometimes he can't contain himself. He says, I, I, I'm not doing anything now <laughs> without Bhakti Chirusami anymore. I want him here. <laughs> I want him here now. <laughs> so it's like, you know, let's end this, you know, this earthly thing. You know, okay, he's such a wonderful person and everything and he's so helpful to everybody, but that's enough. Okay, he has done his share, you know. He has helped millions of people. I want him back. I want Bhakti Chiruswami back for me. <laughs> yes, yeah, sometimes the Lord is also selfish, you know, we should accept that. <laughs> So I, I always see like this, that, that when somebody is pulled like this, pulled out of this world, it's, it's definitely the Lord's doing, you know. It's okay, okay, let's wrap this up, you know, you know I want my arch back, you know. <laughs> that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. So basically, uh, it's a real loss, yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm heartbroken for my devotee friends who are disciples of Bhakti Shri Swami. I'm heartbroken for Rupa Raghunath Prabhu. I'm heartbroken for Rasamanjari the wonderful daughter of Kala Prabhu. So it's, 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 it's crazy. It's, 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 just, it's, it's crazy, but we should concentrate on all the good things that we had experienced through Maharaj. And as Bhakti Thakur says, Vaishnavas never die. Yes, they don't. <laughs> They're just taken by the Lord, you know. Okay, you guys to the level of, of, of Maharaj, I want him now back. So basically, that's the only thing I can say. Uh, it's a loss that, that we never come to terms with this loss. But, but we should be inspired, continually be inspired by all the wonderful things that we were shown, we were taught by the examples of these wonderful devotees because Bhakti, Bhakti Chirumaraj was truly exemplary. And I think that's the wonderful final word for this thing. I don't want to take too much of your time up. Hare Krishna, thank you for your kind attention. Excuse me, my English. Hare Krishna, and please take care. And and we should always be in remembrance of Sri Padam Vishnu Pad, Bhakti Chiru Swami Maharaj Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.